Other than that, Logman has pretty similar controls to Splash Top Remote. Um, we can use two fingers to scroll up or down. Uh, long press is right click. And short press is, or one tap is left click. So let's take a look at how video looks running on Logman Ignition from my Windows XP desktop. Now again, we're not going to be getting any sound here, um, which you also wouldn't be getting from Splash Top Remote with Windows XP. We're basically just looking to see how frame rates look. So with this ad here, um, the frame rates are okay, but they're not great. It's definitely not a smooth experience. And now let's look at full screen. So you're not going to get a smooth experience when trying to watch video on Log Me and Ignition even when we're this close to the router, like we're the same distance from the router as we were when we tested Splash Top Remote, which is pretty close, like less than 15 feet. But even at less than 15 feet, you're not getting the same kind of um, frame rates that you would expect. Now, as I showed you, the mouse movement is a little bit different on LogMeIn Ignition than it is on Splash Top Remote. But one of the benefits of that is that even though the mouse like moves with my finger, even if my finger isn't on it, I'm still able to get at teeny tiny little elements like these uh, icons here on my sidebar or anything along here. So I don't have to worry about being able to tap tiny elements because LogMeIn takes care of that for me by just basically you know, giving me a little mouse pointer that I can move with my finger. One of the other differences we notice with between LogMeIn Ignition and Splash Top Remote is the keyboard. So let's bring up the keyboard here. Now what we've got is mostly the standard iPad keyboard, but remember with Splash Top Ignition there was a little row along the top that had often used uh, buttons or keys from the keyboard that are not generally found on the iPad because they're not necessarily. Now up here we have Control, Alt, Win, and Menu, which are very useful, but there's a no escape key and none of the F keys are available, and uh, Splash Top had um, some key combinations there that were very useful that we don't see here. So uh, it looks like a little more care has been given in the Splash Top remote environment to creating like a fully usable Windows experience, whereas LogMe and Ignition um, gives you the basic keyboard, be able to type easily, but it's not quite as robust. One of the things we do like, though, is that text is nice and clear. And so we very easily be able to add to this document type, and it would be no problem. Let's take a look at how fast. All right, so we've shown that it's not really a great experience watching video via LogMe and Ignition, but let's try games. Like right now we have on our desktop a uh, trial version of Plants vs. Zombies, so let's try playing that. Alright, as you can see already, the frame rates aren't so good, um, but let's look at gameplay. Alright, let's rock!
as you can see, it's not very smooth and it's a little hard with the lag to be able to keep up with the game. Now, Plants vs. Zombies isn't necessarily a game that you would want to play from your desktop since you can't get it on the iPad, but we just wanted to give you just a little showcase of some of the differences between Log Me and Ignition and Splashtop Remote. Now, one of the advantages that uh, Log Me and Ignition has over splash top remote is the fact that logman already is used to switching between two monitors because so many people do have that set up especially at work so there is a way to switch between them and it's kind of fun and takes advantage of the iPad's accelerometer you just shake so right now I'm on the first the primary monitor and there's my second monitor and shake to go back So there you go. Splashtop Remote doesn't have that functionality right now. They might in the future, but that's at least one thing that uh, Logme Ignition has over Splashtop Remote.